commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. What an honor to be called a soldier of the cross. WTJR presents The Pastor Speaks. An army that has never turned back and never suffered loss. Hello, my name is Pastor Paul Washington of Monroe City, Missouri. Pastor of a church there called Promised Land Family Church. Our service times there is Sunday morning at 10 a.m. We also have on Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. We have what we call the gathering. And uh, if you're in that area, in the Marion and Monroe and Rawls and Shelby County area, you're more than welcome to come there. Uh, we pastor a church that is a multicultural church there. So God is doing something in that area. Again, we give you an invite there uh, if you're looking for a church home. Also, I want to take a moment and thank WTJR for allowing me this opportunity to help them work until Jesus returns. Uh, so together, we will get the job done. Today, I want to talk to you uh, from a, a message I've entitled, Houses of Kindness, Where the Free Favors of God Flows. And I want to take that from the book of John, chapter 5. And it says, After these things, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in the Hebrew Bethesda. And that's where we get the, the word house of kindness. That means the house of kindness or the house of grace, Bethesda. Having five porticos, in these lay the multitude of those who were sick, blind, lame, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel of the Lord went down at a certain season and into the pool and stirred up the water. Whoever then first, after the stirring of the water, stepped in was made well from whatever disease with which he was aff afflicted with. So there was a moving of God in this, at this pool of Bethesda, this house of Bethesda. There was a moving of God that at, at a certain time of year where the angels would come and stir the water. And whoever got in first got their miracle, got their healing from whatever disease that they had. So if we look at this, if you were the first person in, you got it. But if you weren't the first person in, then uh, you missed your miracle. But hang on. Something's going to happen here. And a certain man was there who had been 38 years in his sickness. Now think about 38 years this man laid by this pool. 38 years he watched the angel come and stir the water. And he watched people. Uh, we'll say at least 38 people. We don't know if it happened every year, if it happened every month, or if it happened once a month, but at least 38 times he watched the water move and he watched somebody go in, sick, crippled, lame, halt, and when they come out, they were healed. And he watched this for 38 years. But this was a day something different was going to happen because the atmosphere shifter, the life changer, was going to make uh, his appearance there. And that life changer was Jesus. And when Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had already been a long time in that condition. Now, I don't know what condition you're in today. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what you're dealing with. But Jesus does know about that condition. And he'd been there a long time, for 38 years. And when Jesus knew he had been there long in that condition, even though he missed the moving of the water, something was about to change for this guy. Okay? And the sick man, and, and he said to to him, do you wish to get well? Now, that is a question that I want to speak to you today. A question I want to ask you today. Do you want to be well? It is something that you have to answer your, for you. It's a question that it, it goes to you. If Jesus said it to this man, he is saying it to you today. He is saying it to me today. Do you want to get well? You have to make a decision that when the atmosphere shifter, when the life changer comes on the scene, do you want to be well? Of whatever the condition you might be going through, whatever the situation that might be in your life, the word still goes forth today. Do you want to be well? Now, this man, after he heard this question, he says these words. The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, 
But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Now, he begins to give Jesus an excuse, if you will. He begins to say that there's nobody there to put me in the water. But Jesus didn't ask him, did you have somebody there to put you in the water? Jesus asked him, do you want to be well? This is your time. This is your season. If it's something that you want, you can receive. If there's something in your life today that you need from Jesus, he is coming to you today to say, do you want to be well? Do you want to be whole? Now, you stop and think a kind of life this man had for 38 years. He had been in this condition. His life had to be limited. There's a lot of things that he couldn't do. There's a lot of places he couldn't go without somebody helping him go. But Jesus comes on the scene and said, do you want to be well? Do you want to be whole? And now you can have a different quality of life. You can have a different position in life because I'm here. I'm here now to bring you a miracle, bring you a healing, bring you what you need. So do you want to be well today? And the man begins to say, I don't have nobody to put me in. But Jesus comes back to the, to the man and Jesus said to him, arise, take up, your pallet and walk. That's interesting to me that Jesus kind of went by everything he was saying, but he said, now get up, take up your pallet and walk. Why? Because Jesus did not want him in that condition, nor want him in that place anymore. Leave this place because he may have been comfortable there. It, it may have been some benefits or some payoff for him being at this place in that condition because maybe he got carried, maybe people took care of him, but Jesus is saying, now I want you to get up and I want you to walk. This is the same thing the Lord is saying to you today. Today, whatever has got you bound, whatever has got you down, you can receive your healing. You can receive your deliverance and get up and have a quality of life that is better than the life that you have now. It's offered to you today. And immediately the man became well, took up his pallet and began to walk. In John chapter 5, verse 1 through 9, I just read for you. Jesus says, Get up, pick up your pallet, and go. Walk away from this condition. Walk away from this situation. Today, you have a word, and I'm bringing it to you, that you can rise, whatever condition you're in, whatever stopping you from the quality of life that Jesus come to pay for, the quality of life that God sent Jesus here to die for, you can receive it. And what I like about it, also it talks about in the pool of Bethesda, it says the house of kindness where the free Favors of God flow. Do you like free things? Sometimes I do. But when it comes from God, it's always free. And we're going to bear that out here in just a moment. But it says, do you want to be whole? Listen, we have already been qualified to receive from the Lord. In, in 1 Colossians chapter 1, verse 12, the word, of, the word of God says to us this way, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in life. Giving thanks to God who has made us qualified. Listen, I come to let you know today that you are already pre-qualified to receive your healing. I'll come to let you know you are already qualified to receive. If you are maimed, if you are halt, if you are withered, if you are hindered in any way, Jesus has already qualified you because he honored the Father, and the Father through him has qualified you and me to receive what we need today, to receive the healing that we need, to receive the quality of life that we're looking for, to receive the deliverance that our life can be better and we can go forth because Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. I come that you may have it. And it's up to us whether we want to receive it or not, but it's offered to you as a gift. It's offered to you as a free gift from the Father, and that gift is Jesus Christ. That person that qualified us through his death, burial, and resurrection has made us qualified to receive the gift, the free gift, where the free favors of God flow. And this is a word that I'm speaking to the church and to you out there that may be looking, may be wondering, is there a place? Is there, is there a, an out for me? Can I come out of this present situation that I'm in? I'm telling you, God is raising up and God is building houses of kindness in our time, in our, in our uh, dispensation of time, in the time in which we live in. I understand that there's a lot of things happening in the world. I understand that the situation that we see in the world is dark and dreary, but I'll come to let you know that there is a brightness. 
And that brightness is the person of Jesus Christ. And as an ambassador of him, I come to speak to you on this program and promote Jesus Christ. Not a personality, but a person. Person of grace. And his name is Jesus. He's the answer for your situation today. And listen, you have already been qualified. I'm coming to let you know you've already been qualified. You've been pre-qualified. It's like a lot of times we get things in the mail that says you are pre-qualified. That means you don't have to go through a qualification process. You've already qualified. All you have to do is sign your name on the dotted line and send it in. And we get a lot of credit cards and things like that that come in the mail says you're pre-qualified. That means somebody determined that you are qualified to receive something that they're offering. Well, I'm telling you today that you're already pre-qualified to receive from the Lord. There's nothing you have to do but receive. And we'll see that here after I go by. And the reason why we're able to do that is because of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 I want to read to you this because this is the gospel in which we stand in. So it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the life of Jesus Christ. It's his death, burial, and resurrection that has qualified you to receive. That's what happened that day uh, at the pool of Bethesda when Jesus was there and he said to the, to the lame man that had been laying there for 38 years, man, do you want to be whole? Do you want to be whole? Again, I want you to hear that question. Do you want to be whole? Do you want to be delivered? Do you want to be set free? And I'm telling you today, you are already pre-qualified to receive, but you have to receive. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, Now, I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which also you receive. There's the word receive. In which also you stand. He says, I'm making known to you the gospel. That you receive, I'm making known to you how you're standing here. It's because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he goes on to explain the gospel. And I believe that right now we're in a gospel revolution. The church is in a gospel revolution. That, that we are rediscovering the gospel. We are rediscovering what God purposed and what God planned. And it's a gospel of peace and it's a gospel of grace. And that's not that when we think about grace, a lot of times we think of something soft and wimpy, but that's not it. This may be free, but I'm telling you it's not cheap. It costs God. It costs the Son of God to pay the price for us. And this is how he did it. In verse 2 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it says, By which also ye are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins. Listen, he's already died for your sins. The penalty for sin has already been paid. It says in John chapter 1 verse 29, it said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. As John looked out on Jesus, said, Behold the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world. Not only for this church, but the sin of the world has already been paid for. So the Apostle Paul preaching here to the Corinthian church, and he said, first of all, I want you to know that Christ died for your sins. I want you to know you've been qualified because Jesus died for your sins. I want to let you know that he paid that penalty. He paid that price. And by him paying that price, we are qualified now. And he says, according to the scripture, this is the scripture I want you to hear. This is the thing I want you to know. According to the scriptures that Jesus died for your sin. This is the first level of the gospel in which he preached to the Corinthian people here at this time. And then in verse 4, he said and that he was buried. He was buried, meaning he became sin. Second Corinthians chapter 5 teaches us that Jesus became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God. He became what we were so that we can have an exchange at the cross. There's an exchange. We take what he was, he takes what we were. That's an exchange. And it's freely, but you got to receive it. And a lot of times, receiving sounds easy, but sometimes it's the hardest thing for people to do, is to receive. Because people think that they're not good enough. I've done all of this kind of stuff. You don't know where I come from. You don't know where I've been. But let me tell you here today, Jesus took care of all that at the cross. He took care of all that when he carried our sins. He carried them to the cross. He didn't use nobody else. There's a lot of good men in the Bible. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Daniel, Elijah, the, uh, Peter, James, John. But Jesus carried 
the sins. He took it. And let me tell you something. If Jesus took it, it's taken. If he dealt with it, it's dealt with. He was buried. The sins were buried with him. But listen. And that he, ra he was raised on the third day according to the scripture. Now understand. His death, burial, and resurrection is the gospel that the Apostle Paul says was preached to you and that you stand in. He was raised. Why was he raised? Because the sins were put away. They were dealt with. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And let me tell you today, if you're listening to me today, if you're running across this, this program today, let me tell you something. God is not holding your sins against you. Because your sins, all your sins were put on the body of Jesus Christ, who knew no sin. But yet, for our sakes, he became sin. That there might be an exchange today. He took the sins, we take his righteousness. That's why you see at, when he's on the cross, when he says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's the first time you see Jesus addressing the Father as my God, my God. Why? So I can address him now. My father, my father. And when I stand there after receiving the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ that was paid for me, the father sees me in the person of Jesus. Houses of kindness. This is the message that needs to go forth in this day. You've already been pre-qualified -qual pre because of what Jesus has done. Through his death, burial, and resurrection life. In Romans chapter 5, verse 17, says these words. I want you to listen to these words. For if by the transgression of one, death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift. And if you read this chapter, it's talked about the free gift. Of righteousness. It's not my righteousness. It's not your righteousness. It's Jesus' righteousness. Those that will receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness. When I often think about gifts, and, and I like to explain it like this on a birthday or, or during the Christmas season, when you receive something from somebody, you had nothing to do with that but just to receive it. You didn't go purchase it. You didn't go seek it out, but somebody, because of how they cared for you or how they loved you, they wanted to see you smile. They wanted to see you have an expression of happiness. So while they're shopping for you, they're thinking how this is going to make you feel. When they're thinking about the sweater or the dress or they're thinking about a coat or they're thinking about a car or they're thinking about whatever they're, whatever they're looking at and thinking about you, they're thinking about how it's going to make them feel to see you be happy. This is what God was thinking about you. This is what God was thinking about us. He was thinking that way about you. He was thinking that way because he was thinking how the expression that's going to be on your face. And like a father, like a, a, a natural father in a, in a toy store, going to a, a toy store to go buy something for his young son. And he's thinking about how this car or how this doll for, for the daughter, how it's going to make them feel. And because of the joy that is before him, because of the joy of seeing the, the smile on their face, why he's shopping and, and he's thinking and he's got, a, he's got a warm feeling on the inside because he knows that's going to make my son or my daughter smile. And he's smiling while he's purchasing that. That's what I believe the father saw when he sent his son. The joy that would be on our faces. And even Jesus said, for the joy that was set before him, he took upon himself death, form of a servant, and became obedient to death. Even the death of the cross. Why? Because of the joy that was set before him. And that joy was to see his father happy. That joy was to know that his father would be happy. Why? Because there would be many sons and daughters brought to glory. 
one of the toughest things again to do is to receive because people are dealing with you're dealing with either uh, self-condemnation people condemnation or the enemy condemnation but I'm telling you today in Christ there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus a man who walk with him there is no more condemnation but let me finish this out for if by the transgression of one death reign Moses death reign to all of us because of the transgression of the one the man Moses much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ through the one one got us in but one got us out now we are in Christ now we're in the new man we have unhooked from the old man, from the, from the natural man, Moses, but now we're hooked up to the spiritual man. And when we receive the gifts of the abundance of grace, and the word, and grace means, there means unmerited favor, freely given, houses of kindness, where the unmerited favor of God is freely given. And that'll work in any area of your life. Whatever area of your life you need that grace to flow in, it'll work. If you need that grace to flow in your relationship life, it'll work. If you need that grace to flow into your uh, business life, it'll work. If you need that grace to flow into your, to your physical body, to your, to your mind, will, emotions, and personality, and imagination makes up the soul, that, that grace will flow and begin to produce life. You'll begin to reign in life by the one, Jesus Christ. Houses of kindness, where the free favors of God flow. There's a river flowing through the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm under this impression as a pastor and as a man who have, who have been saved and walking with the Lord for 30 years almost. Uh, July of next year, it'll be 30 years since I give my life to the Lord. And I'm under this impression the church is still the best thing on planet earth. The church is still the best entity, the best thing that's ever been created on planet Earth is the church. And I don't care, there may be some, it may have some flaws, there may be some messed up people, some messed up things, but it's still the best thing on planet Earth. We're not saying we're perfect, but we know the perfect one, and that is Jesus Christ. And I'm not here to talk about him, to talk about him, I'm here to talk for him. I mean, I'm an ambassador for Christ, and I'm talking about the one that can cause you to reign in life, one that can cause you to rise up, one that can cause you to be strong in life, one that can cause you to receive your healing and a quality of life like you have never known. And I believe that the greatest days of the church is ahead of us. I believe that it has begun through this gospel revolution. Now we're rediscovering and we're redefining and we're coming back to the Bible of the gospel truth. And I believe today that this message will help you if you hear it. And I pray that you hear it today. The last scripture I want to read for you is found in Matthew chapter 10. And, and church body, I'm really talking to you right now. I'm talking to you believers. I'm talking to us that are believers. I'm talking to us that have accepted the Lord Jesus. I'm talking to us, those of us that have, have heard the gospel and received the gospel and received the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness. And we have received the word of God, received the power of the Holy Spirit. We have received the adoption of sons and daughters. We have received the adoption of sonship, daughterhood, as I like to say. I'm talking to you right now that the world is looking for houses of kindness where people have received the free gift. Because Jesus speaks here in Matthew chapter 10 and he says these words to us. In the fifth verse, these 12 Jesus sent out after instructing them. This is his 12 apostles, the 12 disciples here. Do not go in the way of the Gentiles and do not enter any city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Church, there are lost sheep. Jesus said, other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. But I must bring them that there will be one fold and one shepherd. People in Jesus' mind we're in two categories, sheep in the house that have a shepherd and sheep that are without the house without a shepherd. That's how he saw them. He said, raise your eyes up and look for the harvest is white. 
And I got other sheep I must bring. But when they come to the house, it must be a house of kindness. It must be a house of grace where the things of God are freely given. This is what he's going to bear out. I got, some, I got the lost sheep. Go to the lost sheep as he begins to tell them. And as you go, preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God. God's way is at hand. The king is here. And because the king is here, and because the king has a way he wants to do things, preach and tell them. He said, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then he says, heal the sick, raise the dead, church, cleanse the lepers, church, and cast out devils. Now listen to these words. Freely you have received. Freely give. It's freedom to receive. And because we freely receive, we are to freely give. We, we don't need to disqualify people through tradition and religion and legalism, but we need to begin to let the people know they are qualified to receive. Jesus says again here, it says, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper. Cast out the demons. Freely you have received, freely give. I believe we have to receive first so we can freely have. And what we freely have, we freely give away. That's what we see with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. He says, nobody take my life, but I freely lay it down to redeem. I freely come to do the will of my Father. Even in the garden when he's about to go to the cross and he says, Father, if there's any other way that this thing can happen, let this cup pass for me. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. And here today, he is saying to the, he said to them, and Jesus' words are eternal. He says, the words I say unto you, they are spirit and they are life. That means it's continuing today. That means there's life in it today. There's life in the word. There's life in the words of Jesus. And he says, freely you receive, freely give. We need to begin to say, Lord, I receive that. I receive being able to heal. I receive being able to cast out the spirits. I receive being able to raise the dead. If you receive it freely, then you can give it. But if we don't receive, we can't give. In the houses of kindness that God is building today, where the free favors of God are flowing, we need men and women to stand in the pulpit. We need the congregation to go outside the walls and say, come, you have been pre-qualified to receive what you need from the Lord. Amen. Weapons are not carnal. Our strongholds you can't see. This army becomes mighty. Like time spent on our knees. I'm not ashamed for you to see this soldier on his knees. You might even see a tear or hear a humble. Just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Today's encouraging word has been brought to you by your friends at the Christian Television Network.